Hey guys! I know I usually start with a disclaimer for my videos, but this is a seasonal event, so it's going to change year to year regardless. Oh boy, it's spooky month again, and you know what that means? Reggie Steel. Because he's the true horror. <laughs> But seriously, the 2024 Halloween event is finally here. As always, we have some exclusive decorative items, a special event map, exclusive Pokemon, and much more. This year's event changes up a few things, but otherwise this event is pretty standard, so this video is going to be shorter than usual. So without further ado, let's go over this year's event. A quick note by the way before we start, if you're using the downloadable client, be sure to re-download it from the Discord server so that you can get the latest updates including this event. Since they got rid of the launcher, updates are back to being manual, so you'll have to re-download the client each time you need to update the game. The link should have updated as soon as the event went live. The Halloween event starts on October 10th and will end on November 1st. This gives you around three weeks to enjoy everything that's offered. Because this is the Halloween event, all dark, dragon, and ghost types will have a 25% boost to all their stats during this event. As with all of the other events, the Halloween event has an exclusive event map that you can access for a limited time. In order to access the event map, you must have first beaten all 8 Kanto Gyms and received all 8 badges. You don't need to beat the Elite Four, you just need the 8 badges. Once you've met that criteria, you can head to any Pokemon Center and talk to the Witch to get taken to the event map. Before you get access to any wild encounters, however, you'll need to go through a corn maze to get to the Haunted Forest. This maze comes back every year and it's not too hard to navigate, so just follow my lead and you'll get through it pretty easily. Once you make it through, you'll end up in the Haunted Forest. Here you can encounter Pokemon that will scale with your current team level. They can also drop brains and two new exclusive decorative items. You're also able to encounter special Halloween themed Pokemon as well, which have a 5% chance of showing up and have different sprites. Before going to grind, however, I recommend picking up the exclusive event deco from the event gym. This year, it's the Golet Cape. It's free and exclusive to this year's event, so you should pick it up while you have the chance. To get to the event gym, start from the Haunted Forest and head down and left to get to the Haunted Mansion. Once you're at Haunted Forest 2, go through the small path between the trees. Then continue up this path to get to the Haunted Cave. Once you're inside, head across the water and go straight up to reach the next area. Continue upwards and you'll reach the gym. The trainers and leader of this gym will have Pokemon that scale with your team's max level, minus one, so you don't have to be worried about being underleveled or overleveled. The gym leader's team consists of Hydreigon, Dusknoir, Chandelure, Darkrai, Eveltal, and Giratina. All of them are shiny, of course. Once you defeat the gym leader, you'll receive the Golet Cape and it'll be placed in your item box. With the gym out of the way, we can now talk about all of the exclusive stuff during this event, starting with, of course, the legendary Pokemon. As with the previous few events, you'll have access to multiple different legendary Pokemon that you can choose to hunt, depending on your dex total. Ivolta will still remain as the event legendary in the Haunted Mansion and can be encountered with no restrictions and is accessible to everyone. However, its moveset has been altered this year. Due to the moveset change, Shedinja is no longer a good wall for it as it'll die in one hit. I recommend either a Chansey or Blissey with Minimize or a Wigglytuff with Light Screen. Take your pick, both options are solid walls. For the restricted legendaries, Darkrai and Registeel are restricted behind 400 decks. Darkrai can be found on the second floor of the Haunted Mansion, and Registeel can be found in the brand new area below the Haunted Mansion. Both areas also have a 1 in 50,000 chance for a wild Pokemon to drop the Gengarite. Hoopa will be restricted to the 600 decks area, which will be at the bottom floor of Haunted Cave. This area will have a 1 in 50,000 chance for a wild Pokemon to drop the Benedite. As I stated before, Eveltal can be walled with either Chansey, Blissey, or Wigglytuff, 
and Registeel can be walled by Shedinja. Darkrai can be walled by any Pokemon with the Insomnia ability such as Honchkrow, and Hoopa can be walled by either an Assault Vest Blissey or any specially defensive Dark type like Mandibuzz or Umbreon. I recommend syncing either Mild or Rash for Eveltal, Timid for Darkrai, Careful for Registeel, and Modest for Hoopa. Overall, these are some pretty great legendary options this year. However, there's also been a change to event legendary encounter rates that I'd like to go over. Before this year's event, event legendaries had a base encounter rate of 1 in 100,000. This gave everyone a better chance of encountering a legendary since events don't last too long. If you all remember the most recent big patch, the legendless encounter system got completely reworked. Go check out my video on that if you haven't seen it yet. Because the legendless encounter boost starts right away, they've removed the base event legendary encounter rate. Event legendaries have now gone back to the base odds of 1 in 125,000. However, event legendaries now instead receive a nice permanent 30k LLE boost. For example, if you have 10k LLE, your actual LLE is 40k. If you encounter a legendary, your LLE will reset back to zero, but the permanent 30k boost will continue on. And yes, this 30k boost does affect the sync rate. So for the most part, event legendaries will now have a much higher sync rate than regular legendaries. Overall, not much should really change. Event legendaries are still going to be getting an encounter boost across the board, but it's just gonna be working a bit differently. Brody did say that they're gonna keep an eye on this change, however. Next, as with all of the other previous Halloween events, there are some exclusive Pokemon that I recommend picking up while you have the chance. These exclusive Pokemon, excluding Yveltal of course, can spawn on every non-dex locked event map. You can encounter Phantom, Pumpkaboo, Joltik, and Yamask as rares, and Noibat as an extremely rare. For anyone new to the game, I highly recommend picking up a Joltik with the ability Compound Eyes while you're here as it's essential for getting into drop farming. Regardless of where you are in the event, every Pokemon has a 1 in 72 chance to drop brains when defeated. Brains are the exclusive event currency which can be exchanged with the Witch for prizes such as Pokemon, TMs, ability capsules, and a few exclusive decorative items. You can also purchase trick or treat bags which will give you a random item including some exclusive Halloween items such as Halloween candy and Halloween balls. There's not really a best thing to buy, I mean ability capsules are always great and the Mountain Deco are pretty cool, but you can pretty much just spend your brains on trick or treat bags and still be fine. It's really up to you, just kinda take your pick on whatever you'd like. During this event, there will be a two times shiny weekend starting on October 11th at 3pm server time, and will end on October 14th at 3pm server time. This also includes Pokemon rolled from shops, rolled from eggs or Pokemon boxes, and rolled mounts from the credit shop. These two times shiny weekends are exclusive to the Easter and Halloween events, so take advantage of it while you can. There will also be a two times legendary weekend starting on October 25th at 3 p.m. server time and will end on October 28th at 3 p.m. server time. This means that every single legendary Pokemon will have their encounter chances doubled from 1 in 125,000 to around 1 in 62,000. Legendary chances are also doubled for Pokemon boxes. Now let's talk decorative items. Decos are a staple of events, and I think most players will be pretty happy with the spread we've got this year. Here's every decorative item and mount that you can get during the event and how you can get them. First, there are the exclusive map drops. These have a 1 in 10,000 chance to drop from any wild Pokemon on any non-dex locked map. These are the Shedinja Wings and the Shedinja Halo. Unfortunately, during both this year's Halloween event as well as this year's Christmas event, there will not be a Dex Locked Mount Drop. Instead, there will be Decos auctioned off every day of the event, which consists of the Infernal Cubone Mask, the Grim Reaper costume, and the Skeletal and Shiny Skeletal Bikes. Each day, two costumes, two masks, two mounts, and one Shiny Mount will be auctioned off, so get them while you can. Next, we've got the Bonnet Mount, which can be purchased from the Witch for 150 brains and the Marshadow costume for 250 brains. By the way, the Bonnet Mount has a shiny version and has the same shiny rates as all of the other mounts. And of course, we can't forget about the credit shop decos and mounts that you can get by donating to the game and receiving credits. Personally, I think this year's decos are pretty nice. The Skeletal Gliscor Mount looks awesome, the bike looks pretty cool, 
And they even added a Blacephalon head for you fucking clowns out there. One other thing I'd like to briefly cover are instances. Essentially, every map will have a player cap of 25 players. After hitting 25 players, a new instance of that map will be created and more players can play on that map. Think of it like copying a room where it's the same room, but with different players. If you're trying to get on a specific instance, let's say if you're trying to play with a friend or something, you can just keep going in and out of loading zones until you hit the instance you want. And lastly, there's a couple more things that I'll quickly go over as it's just standard stuff for all events. Experience has been boosted globally by 50%. This means that regardless of where you are in the game, you'll still be getting that 50% boost. This boost stacks with other boosts such as Altar Blessings. If you're trying to level up your Pokemon quickly, I highly recommend grinding on the event maps. The wild Pokemon here scale with your level, however it caps out at level 83. Treasure chests are also going to be spawning more frequently. And finally, credit donations have been given a 10% boost during the event. So if you're planning to buy credits, I would do it now. And that's it for this year's event. Be sure to check out my channel Discord server by clicking the link in the description. I post exclusive video updates there, so be sure to join. Also be sure to check out the official Pokenexus Discord server to know if anything has changed during the event by doing slash Discord in-game. So with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you guys have fun during the event, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.